Hi, I'm Dr. Younger. I'm director of the Neuroinflammation Pain and Fatigue Laboratory. And today I want to talk about low-dose naltrexone and long COVID. So the basic story is you were exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 virus. You had the illness. You were sick for a while. Then the virus went away. But now it's months later and you still feel uh, bad. You still have fatigue or you have some cognitive issues maybe mood, maybe motivation issues, maybe your sense of smell is still gone, something is wrong, maybe dizzy, you still have symptoms, even though for all intents and purposes, the virus is gone. What is going on? And so the big question is, can lotus naltrexone be used to reverse that condition and get you back to normal? So I'm just going to give the general story about that right now. I'm not going to go into the details, uh, like dosage and titration schedule and who should take it and who shouldn't. We'll do that at another time. I just want to get the general idea out uh, right now. Uh, a couple of uh, caveats. One, keep in mind that I'm talking about the off-label use of a treatment. Naltrexone does not have FDA approval for treating long COVID, so keep that in mind. And number two, as with any video I do, I am a biomedical scientist. I'm not a physician, so it's not my job to give individual advice or tell you what you should take or not take. That's really the job of a physician. I just give information about what tools we should use and what is possible. So with all that in mind, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about lotus naltrexone for long COVID. So uh, let me tell you what naltrexone is. Naltrexone is just a pharmaceutical. It's a synthesized drug. It does a lot of different things depending on the dosage. At dosages around 50 to 100 milligrams, it does things completely different on different cells. We're not interested in those things with long COVID. What we're interested in are low dosages, which is why it's called low-dose naltrexone, at around 4.5 milligrams per day. It's pretty low dose. The range is maybe 1 to 9 milligrams per day. At that dosage, naltrexone crosses the blood-brain barrier, so it gets into the brain, and it can dock at a receptor called toll-like receptor 4, and those are on microglia cells. And these microglia cells are responsible for making us feel quite bad when we're sick, so the fatigue we get, the your motivation to just lay in bed or lay on the couch while you have the flu or COVID-19, that is being caused by the microglia. So they get switched into a pro-inflammatory state, and lotus naltrexone, by docking on that toll-like receptor 4 receptor, can knock them back or switch them back to their default state where they're not producing these chemicals to make you feel bad. So that's what naltrexone does. Why that may help with long COVID is because my current hypothesis about what long COVID is, is that when you were exposed to the SARS-CoV-2 virus, it was, for lack of a better word, traumatizing to the microglia. Perhaps the virus got into the brain, which is a, an emergency situation, or maybe it was just such a sustained or severe viral illness that it caused the microglia to become stuck in the on position. And that's something that we know can happen. Uh, we don't know for sure that's what's happening with COVID-19, but it's something we suspect is happening. And so you had the virus, instead of those microglia cells going back to their default state after the virus was eradicated, they stayed stuck in the on position or the inflammatory condition. So just like I mentioned before, how we would treat that then is to coax those microglia back into their default resting state. So it's the idea that I was giving earlier about how we think naltrexone works with some other conditions caused by viruses. That's why I think it may help with um, long COVID. You basically need to get your microglia cells back to their normal state. Once you do that and the virus has already been eradicated, you should go back to normal. So it's kind of like resetting an alarm that's just stuck on and sounding all the time when it shouldn't be. And so all those symptoms should be going away. We have no evidence that there's actual neurological damage with long COVID. And so we don't think that anything has been broken. It's just a matter of resetting these alarms and these systems. So I hope that's what's happening uh, because 
that is something that there are, there are methods for treating, and lotus naltrexone is one of those that has already been demonstrated to work when problems involve this kind of microglia sensitivity that thinks causing uh, long COVID. So that's the idea. Again, the, the short version. So is there any evidence of this, specifically in long COVID? There's not much. Uh, I did a search probably three days ago, and at that time, I think I found one clinical trial of lotus naltrexone for long COVID. I was surprised to even see that, and that's because it takes a long time to do a proper clinical trial. You've got to you have to go through all these regulatory approvals. You have to get the money, which that can take half a year or a year. You've got to design the study. You've got to recruit people. You've got to keep them in the study for a long time. You have to do your analyses. Then you have to get the paper written and you have to get it published. It usually takes many years. Everyone's going really, really fast. But still, to run a clinical trial in a year is basically impossible. So it's, it's cool that there already is something. It's a very small trial and it's not a double-blind placebo-controlled trial, so it doesn't rise to the level where I can say, yes, this is proof, you should take this, it works. I can't say that, but it is important information, so I'm glad it's out there. I will put a link to the study in the description below. I don't know if it's open access, which means everyone can access it. I hope it is. Um, if not, you have to be like at a medical library to get it, so We'll see, but at least I'll put it there, and at the very minimum, you can read the abstract and see what it's about. So not a ton of evidence. That's not surprising. There are, I believe there are one or two active lotus naltrexone for long COVID trials going on right now. I don't know for sure if they're active, but they're registered at clinicaltrials.gov, so at least someone was planning them. I imagine there are multiple grants out to do these studies. So I have a grant out, and I'm sure a handful of other people are thinking the same way. It wouldn't be surprising. So the trials will be conducted one way or another. The problem with getting the evidence we need to be able to say, yes, if you have long COVID, take lotus naltrexone. The problem is that it'll probably still take another year or so to get the information. It could even take two to really, really, really know. And... You know, we have to go through this discipline set of steps to be absolutely sure, but that doesn't do you any good right now. That's the problem. To ask people to wait for one or two years while they can't function or can't work, that's too much to ask. And so really the question right now is, okay, great, I'm glad you're doing these studies, but should I take lotus naltrexone given what we know? Should I take it right now? That's a tough question. I can't really answer that because as a scientist, I have to make sure that my answers come from scientific evidence. That's the whole point. And we just don't have it yet. And so I can't answer the question, should you try it? So I can answer the question, what would I do if I was in this situation? And I can answer that honestly. So, you know, I run a research laboratory that really takes a lot of work to keep going. And if I had long COVID, I don't see how it would be possible to keep the lab going. If I had that, it would probably close down because it just takes so much work. And if you're not at the top of your game, if I'm not at the top of my game, if I'm fatigued all the time and had to rest for days and days and I couldn't think and I couldn't write, I don't know how it'd be possible. And so if I had long COVID, we would have to be trying treatments no matter what. And so I would be going to my physician and if my physician had no ideas of what to try and they're like, well, we don't know what's going on. There's no evidence yet. There's no treatment I can give you. Or if we tried a handful of things, but nothing worked, I would say, listen, we've got to try something. And I would take the Lotus naltrexone papers and would say, look, let's try this. I know it's not much evidence, but we've got to try it. That's what I would do. I, th I would feel pretty safe doing that, even though we don't have a lot of evidence specifically for long COVID because it's been used for many other conditions safely for such a long time. So there's not really safety issues with it. 
the side effects are very low to non-existence, non-existent. Most people do not have any problem at all. I think with fibromyalgia, people have more vivid dreams for a week or two, but you know, it's a pretty minor, very tolerable side effect. And so I would p- feel pretty safe trying it personally if there was no alternatives being given to me. So that's really what I would say. Um, if you do have a physician that's willing to try this, uh, you know, again, we're targeting dosages around 4.5 milligrams per day. With long COVID, we don't know what the dosage exactly is going to be. <clears throat> it might be similar to fibromyalgia or Crohn's disease where LDN works really well, but it may be different. You know, we have to test it to know for sure, but that would be my best guess if you had to start somewhere is around 4.5 milligrams per day. And at least with those other conditions, it takes about a month to know for sure, well, to have a good guess if it's working for you, and really a couple months before you know for sure. So you have to take it for a couple months to know, okay, this is actually helping. For long COVID, it could be shorter, it could be longer. Again, we don't know until we run those studies. But I would say if we're going to make our best guess, if you're going to try it, you know, you can't just take it for a week and say, oh, that's not helping. You really got to give it that month to two months to see if it's going to help. So that's where we're at right now. We've got this kind of evidence that it could help. There's some scientific evidence. I certainly have uh, individuals who have tried it and said it helped. I certainly have physicians who have contacted me or I've contacted them and they said this is working for my patients. So the anecdotal evidence I'm getting is telling me that lotus naltrexone can be effective for long COVID and it's definitely helping. But again, that's anecdotal, so I can't give a definitive answer, but that's where we're at right now. So that's the general story. I I hope that's uh, helpful to some degree. If it would be helpful, I can do a separate video on more of the specifics, like, you know, what should the starting dosage be? How do you get this? Like, where do you get lotus naltrexone? Uh, A little more information about side effects and... Is there anyone who shouldn't take it? Contraindications. I can do that as a separate video, but I just want to get this idea out because, you know, if you're looking at what to do with long COVID and what treatments work, you'll probably run into this low dose naltrexone idea. So I just wanted to let everyone know my perspective on it. And it is at the very top of my list of compounds to try for long COVID. So I have a lot of, I guess, optimism, um, or I have a lot of reason to believe that it may be helpful, but But we will see. We'll keep pushing forward as fast as we can to get the definitive answer. But I I do hope that's helpful. In the meantime, I know what we really need right now are treatments that people with long COVID can take right now and get better. And that is the goal. So, you know, myself and other groups will go as quickly as possible to make that happen. So thank you.